Mason Jennings, I've literally been a fan of yours since uh, you've been starting to play music. Four, 14 oh, LPs, four EPs, two live albums. You've been a tireless working musician and prolific songwriter for 20 plus years. You've played music some, with some of the best and brightest talent in Minnesota and beyond. And this February, you are going to release a brand new LP. Um, can you give listeners some uh, and fans some insight into the new record and how you've evolved as a musician? Uh, sure. Thank you. Um, the record's called Real Heart. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been making it. It's been about four years between the records, which is, I think, my longest longest space between two records. And um, mm-hmm. so I've been working hard on a bunch of songs. And it's it's produced by Stone Gosser from Pearl Jam and Regan Hagar. Wow. They, um, they run the label Loose Groove Records. And so the record's coming out on Loose Groove. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm real excited about it. Wonderful. That's awesome. Uh, your first single off the record is called On the Brink, and and which is as highlighted in the music video, you you talk about the abuse of religious and cult leaders from all but different backgrounds. And um, what compelled you to write about this subject? And um, I noticed you have a line that says, I've never noticed how much they target me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's been, that's that's a song that's probably like. Mm-hmm many years in the making just because it, it definitely mm-hmm. pulls from a bunch of different areas where it's it, it has to do with cults but it also has to do with some people in the music business like sure just as soon as you go into the public eye um for me people have just started targeting me whether whether it be people coming to me saying like i yep. know the voice of god and 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 i'm yep. the one that has the answer for you or or when they're big producers and stuff where they'll be like you know i'm a spiritual person but then they also do this really shady stuff behind the scenes and i was just watching mm-hmm. this whole thing unfold and it's kind of a confusing um landscape to to navigate um so that song's just kind of been kind of bouncing around in my head and i was surprised actually that stone wanted to use that as the first single but I think it's it's cool because it's kind of a different side for me like a lot of my records a lot of my songs Mm -hmm. are more just like optimistic and this one's kind of just more like calling people out (laughs) on bad behavior and just sort of like encouraging people to sort of discern Mm -hmm. and and um find their own center so I mean I'm, I'm stoked that it's the first single but it's kind of a departure for me a little bit cool I appreciate that yeah, I've had a chance to listen to most of your new record. And as someone who's been a follower of yours since the early 2000s, again, there's like there's a comfort to your voice and, and your your playing and your performing. And and That's... I also appreciate how real it com- it gets when it comes to discussing topics such as mental health and facing mm. inner demons. And um, yeah. can you touch a bit on, on what that journey has been like over the past a, a year or so for you, especially in such a tumultuous time as COVID? Yeah, COVID's been rough. I mean, it's it's sort of like, obviously mm-hmm. for everybody, it's been rough, but for the music business in general, it's it was kind of like a uh, major blow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It was sort of like, but in, in the, to look on the positive of it, it's it sort of made me think, uh, it, it, I feel grateful for the, for um, all the, all the stuff that's come out of it. Like, like I'm in a band now called Painted Shield and we, and we work on um, you know, all of our work mm-hmm. is done virtually and it's like Matt Chamberlain on drums and this woman, Brittany mm-hmm. Davis on piano and so, and Stone Gossard on guitar. So like things like that have been really cool for mental health as far as like, you know, I can make yeah. these records virtually, but yep. Yep. it's been a challenge. I mean, it's, it's hard mm-hmm. not to feel like pretty dark. I think a lot of people are, and I guess on one, on one uh, side of it, um, music has been a place that I keep going for, for some kind of, uh, comfort like you said and, and hope mm-hmm. and so you know the, the, it's both it's like been hard for musicians but also music's the place that I end up going whether it be creating my own music or listening to others it's it's definitely a place I go for comfort and hope too me me too I can totally relate to that yeah yeah um yeah I also appreciate a lot of the artistic elements in this record um there are plenty of just beautiful like sonic textures and and fine instrumentation i i've always been Thanks. kind of like someone who's like bowed down to your like guitar playing especially Thank you. um can you give us some insights into what inspires you creatively and artistically within your when within music production oh cool um yeah this one yeah. was interesting because i it mm-hmm. actually i actually set out to make more of like a record that was no guitar and and it was, mm-hmm. I was kind of listening to a lot of craft work and like just different, like kind of electronic music. So when I made, cool. made this record, it was like, 
I put some vocals and guitar down, but I, I, I put them separately down. So I was thinking of muting the guitar. And then when Stone uh, heard the guitar, he was like, man, you got to leave all the guitar in here because this is almost like a love letter to the acoustic guitar. And I, which yeah. I was happy to do because I mean, for me, when I'm just yeah. in now, like I play guitar every day, I just, I'm in love with yeah. acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of like, it almost went in the back door where like just naturally I was just playing these acoustic guitars. And I think I just didn't have any real preconceived notion. I thought maybe it would just be pulled off and, and electronics would be put in there, but instead it went the complete opposite way, which huh. is because it was so natural, yep. all the guitar stayed. And then we ended up using very little drums and it was just a lot of like, um, Mm -hmm. you know like upright bass and some horns and really mm -hmm. cool like mellotron and stuff and and uh some percussion and stuff so it was just sort of like the production we went for was just the guitar and voices center and then everything else just kind of went off from it in the same vein as like nick drake production or um sure you know like cat stevens or something like that so I, I ended up being really happy with the production, but it was kind of a cool, like it went in a giant circle to get there. Like we, we headed to electric land and then we came back to like really warm, really sort of acoustic production. Yeah. It's, um, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, you, the side project painted shield. Yeah. Um, tell me more about that. Have you ever done a side project before? It's like, I'm, I'm, um, and that the fact that it's no. virtual, like that is yeah. so cool. I, I'm, I'm interested to hear more of your thoughts about this uh, side project. And yeah, it was um, the first time I've ever done that before. And it started like about seven mm -hmm. years ago. Um, Stone Gossard cool. and I started playing together, like just through emails, like he would put a guitar track down and then I would write some vocals. And we did a seven inch like that. And then about three years ago, maybe I was thinking like, Hey, you know, that was really cool what Stone and I did. Like I should reach out to him again. So I, was, I reached out to him again and we started working again on some stuff, but it, it went like even way better than it did the first time. And mm -hmm. um, I think I just like matured as an artist and I was sort of in a different spot. And then he was like, you know, Matt Chamberlain is this amazing drummer and Matt, mm -hmm. Matt Chamberlain for people that don't know is like, when you call him, you're like, who are you working with this week? And he'll be like, oh, you know, just this Lord and Lana Del Rey and Stevie <laughs> Nicks and Bruce Springsteen. And I'm like, what the oh hell? Oh my like, gosh. It's so, crazy. so he's just this yeah. like top session drummer, but he also writes music too. So, right. so Stone was like, let's get, um, let's get Matt Chamberlain involved. And then Brittany Davis is an amazing singer and, and keyboard player. So then, mm -hmm. but she also plays a lot of synth bass. So we ended up being this kind of band where it's like synth bass and like, Matt uh -huh. Chamberlain on drums and then Matt plays keyboards too and then electric guitar and then I just I'm the singer so I come up with like the lyrics and the melodies right. and um it's been so fun we did one so we did one record during the, the pan we started before the pandemic but then we got it actually like mm -hmm. ended um we got to finish it when the pandemic just started so then we put that out last uh, November and then we just finished the second record too and mm -hmm. I think it's probably going to be a double record and and that's going to come out I think in a next april so the singles for that record will start coming out probably in january or february and it's real heavy synth and like uh, awesome analog synth yeah and I'm, I'm really like it's it sounds massive so it's kind of nice to have painted shield coming out in the next year that's really huge major synth record and then yep. this solo record which is just such a warm intimate acoustic record so it's kind of nice very to much both. so absolutely um can we expect any live performances then coming up in the the uh especially pain and shield I like that sounds awesome <laughs> yeah we're gonna hopefully yeah, do yeah. some stuff I don't know I think it probably yeah. that will those those shows will probably be late next summer in the fall but okay. I hope, I'm for sure we're gonna try to do something in the Twin Cities because we'll for sure like they're located like in Seattle and LA so I'm sure I'm sure we'll do shows yeah. like Seattle LA and, and the Twin Cities and hopefully oh, like so Europe cool. and, and other places too so sure awesome um anything else you'd like to say about your upcoming record or just new projects and um, I, I once again feel so grateful to have you on air with us and, um, and you know, lots of followers here on the current of, of your music. And uh, uh, um, thank you. so, yeah, I'm just I'm just super grateful for the current, you know, like it's been Aww. incredibly supportive for me. And, and I'm mm -hmm. so grateful because, you know, when you when you travel around, not many cities have a, a radio station like that. There's like two or three cities, you know, that have mm -hmm. great radio and the current's kind of the the leading station in the country for this kind of music so super yeah. supportive um mm -hmm. yeah i just i'm just really grateful for y'all appreciate it very much mason um 
And because this might air on Halloween, what is your favorite Halloween candy? Oh, that's that's a close like Butterfinger probably. But I also what do we have downstairs? We have Butterfingers, Junior Mints. We have (laughs) Kit Kat, and we have one of the other ones, Peppermint Patties. Those are it's those are some good. I love Halloween. Like I love this time of year, and especially (laughs) up here where the leaves are so beautiful. Yeah, I know. Indeed, cool. Well, thank you so much for your time and. Look forward to your record coming out and uh, and your new single, On the Brink. Thanks, Diane. I appreciate it. It's nice talking to you. Yeah. Nice talking to you, too. Bye. Take care.